Look at this baby girl right here. She was look at this baby girl. We gave her a bath today because she was stinking bad. Yes, she was. She stunk so bad that the last two nights I made her sleep in the living room. She didn't know what to think. She didn't know what was going on. But we got her bathed and clean. She's all pretty and soft. So here she is back up on the bed with Mama. <laughs> Just look at that. Just look at that baby girl. She hears that washing machine spinning. Get <laughs> a guy in a guy. Boy, the wind blew today, it blasted. Like it, it just went nuts blasting today and the dirt was blowing and it was agitating kind of and kind of worrisome. You a girl, you a girl. Look at your baby girl. We washed her ears out and everything. Yes, we did, her silky soft little ears. Silky soft. <laughs> Bless your heart. So she looks like a tight. Look tight, look tight. She needs your toenails cut. They grow fast and they're long. And she just absolutely won't let us cut them. I wish she would. We could just have it done within a, about four or five minutes tops. Four, probably four minutes tops. She just let us do it here, girl. She is not used to anybody cutting her toenails because they had her tied up outside for years and never had her toenails cut and she ain't used to getting them cut uh, I have to worry about going to the doctor they reschedule my appointment I have to go here in I don't know what a couple of days to find out what she wants to talk about my lab results bad news i'm sure and all i can say is oh well I'm gonna die someday anyway huh. so yeah that's how it is I'm one of them people I ain't gonna go in for no drastic treatments and a uh, bunch of specialist visits and all this and that and this and that and there ain't nothing they can do, really. But the most they'll do is tell you to change your diet, which we already know. Because so many things there ain't no cure for them anyway. They just talk to you and then charge you several hundred dollars per visit. And yes, my insurance would pay for part of it, but not all of it. And my husband would have to be taken off from work to haul me to them specialist appointments and, and them not going to be able to do nothing about it anyway. say going through all that just rigmarole uh, I just can't see doing it no, I don't want to now if I was in 
some kind of severe pain, then yeah, I'd want them to give me something for the pain, of course. But uh, uh, nothing drastic. Now, small, now some kind of a, a surgery that wasn't too drastic, yeah. I, I've already had two surgeries, small, what I call small surgeries. But, uh, I ain't gonna go in for no bunch of other stuff. I, that ain't gonna happen. Just ain't gonna happen. They're lucky I show up at the clinic just for <laughs> general, <laughs> general stuff so I can keep getting my blood pressure pills and thyroid pills and anxiety pills. And I need to get some more of uh, them uh, cholesterol pills. Now, I'll take pills, but I ain't going in for a bunch of other stuff now, a bunch of treatments and all this and that shit. I ain't going to do it. I want to do like my Uncle Bill did. God was so merciful when he took Uncle Bill. Uncle Bill just... He said, I'm just so tired, I just want to go to sleep. And he went to sleep, and he didn't wake up. God took him peaceful. That's the ideal way to go. To go to sleep. And then God take you peaceful. I didn't get anything done as far as crochet or sewing today. I've been doing some laundry a little bit. What did I do earlier? Oh, I washed, I washed uh, Mila's couch blanket and uh, those two towels that I keep in the windowsill for, I washed them, dried them, got them put back where they go. Now I'm washing, I'm washing a blanket and a chair cover and a couple other things. But, uh, my husband's laundry piles up pretty quick, so I try to keep things done up. This house needs to be spring cleaned so bad it's so dusty. It's getting plum filthy and it's getting where it smells kind of dirty and it's just musty smelling. It's, dang, I wish I had some help to get it cleaned up. Uh, the problem, the main problem is what really makes it so hard is I got so much stuff everywhere. All that stuff gets dusty, and the furniture it's sitting on gets dusty, floors get dusty, the walls are dusty. Out here in West Texas, people's walls get dusty. These walls are dusty. You can take a damp rag and wipe on part of the wall and just stand back and look and you can see the difference where you wipe the dust off and where the dust is still everywhere else. You can see the difference. Oh. This, this house needs to be needs a good spring cleaning. I need to let go of some things that I ain't never gonna use. Things that I know I ain't never gonna use. But some things are keepsakes. There are some things. Problem is I have a lot of keepsakes. <laughs> Huh. It 
that ain't that something how we get attached to things? Ain't that something? Baby girl. Look at this baby girl. Look at her. She's so cute. Look at your little tafies. She got them little tafies that stick out. Yes, she does. <laughs> You're so cute, little girl. Yes, you are. I love her. I love this baby girl. Yes, I do. I love her. Every animal I've ever known throughout my life has been an individual person, animal person. Every one of them, individual. And I love them all. All animals I ever knew, ever saw, everything, I love them all. All animals I've never seen yet <laughs> in the world, I love them all. Sweet, innocent babies is what they are. Sweet, innocent babies. They, they glorify God. They bring glory to God. All of God's creation brings Him glory. Nature itself is proof of God. It's the evidence of God. Not to mention... The fact that we exist, <laughs> that proves there's God. And the relationship you have with God is not like any other relationship you ever have in your entire put together. It's not like a, another human being. It's not like an animal. It's not like a, a friend or anything. It's not like any human or animal relationship. It's entirely different. Entirely different. And those of us who have experienced God personally, when we tell you to believe the Bible and believe the gospel, we're telling you the truth we know from personal experience with God that the Bible is true. I am a witness for God. God is true, just like the Bible says. And that's good news that's good news for us. I never will understand people that hate themselves so much they, they don't mind going to hell. You tell them God loves you and you can be forgiven. And you, can, you know, get God in your life and go to heaven and all that, and they they get real mad. They don't want to hear it. And there's people that are so, their hearts become so hardened to a point. There's a point where their heart becomes so hard that it's a point of no return. There's, uh, there's some scriptures in the Bible that talks about that. Next time I come across that, I'll... I'll, I'll I'll show it to y'all. But uh, there's there's a play, point of no return. And it's not God's fault. It's not God's fault. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to believe and be saved. All should come to eternal life because God is love. God is love. 
but he's also holy and righteous and just. And there's things that makes him mad. Mainly sin and the evil. Evil, people doing evil that makes him mad. God is angry with the wicked every day, the Bible says. If you make your peace with God, he won't be mad at you no more. And uh, it'll change your life. Change your life from the inside out. God will start teaching you things and showing you things that you didn't know before that only the Holy Spirit can show you. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal it to you. Through the written word of God, the Bible, and with the Holy Spirit revealing uh, spiritual truth to you, giving you wisdom and knowledge and understanding comes from the Holy Spirit. So anybody who's never been saved, you haven't been born again, well, what makes you think you know enough to tell, uh, tell us Christians that, you know, that we're wrong and, and you mock at us and scoff at us? What makes you think you're so smart? When you, you haven't even, you've never even met with God you've never you've never come to God and sought him out to get to know him and, and why don't you because God is not your enemy you can make him your enemy but he's, he's really not your enemy the devil's your enemy God wants you to repent and turn to him and let him forgive you and save you He's your friend, not your enemy. But if it's up to you to choose for yourself, make up your own mind, because God's not going to force you. God is not going to force anybody to heaven that don't want to go. Mm -mm. He won't force you. So, there's that. In this house, it bothered me. It's been bothering me for days, for days and days and days. It's been bothering me. I guess I'll just do like I've been doing. Just do a little bit of something every day. Some little old something. <laughs> That's all I can do. I need to get some boxes some cardboard boxes and well, I try to make myself get rid of some stuff and get clear off the surfaces like on the dresser and the shelves and stuff clear off some surfaces and get rid of some of the clutter that's what I need to do is get rid of some clutter gosh I can't find stuff when I need it because it's so cluttered and unorganized. I, I've got all that yarn over there, see? I don't know if you can see it. That, over there on that wall over there, there's got all that uh, yarn over there. And all those boxes there are piled up. And that's supposed to be my sewing this is supposed to be my sewing room. That that half of the, of the bedroom, that part of it, or, or one third of it there, is supposed to be my sewing room and nothing else. And I've got boxes and boxes of yarn stacked up over there in the way. But where else would I put it? See, the whole I, we've got this whole house just stacked up like a hoarder's. It's, gosh, it's awful. <laughs> It's awful. <laughs> Why can't we live simple like a, like these doggies do? They just come into this world with nothing but the hair on their skin. And 
and their cute little ears. Velvety, silky soft. Silky soft. <laughs> I love her, yes I do. Animals like it when you talk to them. They do, they soak it up. They soak it up, don't you, in a girl? <laughs> Smells good. We use that uh, dog shampoo, it's oatmeal. Oatmeal shampoo. I like it real well. And uh, if, if, like, if we run out of dog shampoo, I'll use human shampoo. Go ahead and use human shampoo. Uh, something like the Pantene is nice. And dogs, uh, dogs uh, in their coat. And I don't think it dries your skin out too much. Some people, a lot of people, I've seen some stuff on uh, Facebook, a lot of people saying they use a dish, Dawn dish soap to bathe their dogs, cats and dogs. Well, uh, I'm going to tell you, that's the worst thing you can do because the main ingredient in Dawn and all other, all other dish soaps is sodium laurel sulfate and it has been proven to cause cancer. And you know what? It's also in a liquid bath soap. Those liquid bath soaps that you pump out or you, you know, screw the lid off or whatever you do with them. Liquid bath soaps, sodium laurel sulfate. That's why I don't use them. I bathe with regular bars of soap, old-fashioned bars of soap. I like that, and it suits me just fine. I feel good and clean when I come out of the shower. I took a shower last night. Believe it or not, y'all, it's a miracle. I took a shower last night. It sure felt good. Yeah. So me and this little girl are both clean for a while now. We're both clean. <laughs> so soft and silky and pretty and beautiful. You know. Every animal and bird and whatnot, they're a beautiful masterpiece of God. They're all, each one is a masterpiece. Think about it. We're a, each one of us is a masterpiece. Think about it. All the mega gajillions of cells and atoms that we're made out of and and every atom and cell does this and does that and the, knows its place and where it needs to go and what it needs to do uh, all this your endocrine system and it knows what to do your immune system knows what to do because god designed all of this and put all of this intricate stuff together and spoke it into existence by the power of his word by the power of his word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh, Jesus, and dwelt among us. Yep. And everything that was made was made by him. And without him was nothing made. Jesus created everything because he's the living word of God. And everything was spoken into existence by the power of God's word. <laughs> God 
God can do anything he wants to. He can do anything he wants to. Ain't that right, Edda Gar? Look at that little girl. Look at that, Edda Gar. Edda Gar. Look, Tat, Edda Gar. I love her. I love her. Look at that baby girl. Look at that baby girl. So sweet. I've been sleeping with dogs most of my life. I think I started... Let's see. What? How old was I? I might have started around age 30. I don't know. Well, it'd be half my life. About half my life. <coughs> Half my life, I've been sleeping with dogs. <laughs> They're so sweet. It's just such a comfort to have them nearby, and I feel safer with them. They're with me. And it's just a sweet companionship. They're just so sweet. It's a blessing. They, they love you with all their heart. They don't hold back love. Ain't that something? Some people say, ah, oh, it's just a dog. Well, why is it then that they love you with all their whole heart and they would give their life trying to save you, trying to defend you from something? They would give their own life without hesitation. Tell me that ain't love. Yeah. Dogs know what love is. Cats do too. All the, most animals do, I think. Most animals do. Now the reptiles... I don't know. I think that's something different. Reptiles and insects, I think that's something different. Uh, I think it's something different. Uh, I'm not saying they're evil because God created everything and then said it was good. So there's a reason why he created insects and reptiles. My least favorite creatures. <laughs> but, uh, Yeah, as I was saying, there ain't nothing sweeter than, you know, sleeping with your baby dog or your cats or whatever. Except for if you're sleeping with your, laying there with your, you have your own little baby with you. And you're, you're your baby laying there beside you. She's, recently been born and you're watching her sleep and you're thinking it's just so incredible it's just so it's just so miraculous and so uh, yeah you know here's another masterpiece that god created and he brought her out from my body two of them I had two girls, and each one is unique and a masterpiece of God. Mm -hmm. The fact, very fact that we are self-aware proves there's a God, because where did our self-awareness come from? Before we, we didn't even exist. So where did it come from? It came from God. <laughs> oh, it's good. The more you learn about the Bible and about God, it's really neat. It's so interesting, real interesting, and it helps to understand a lot of things. And 
and uh, it, it's encouraging, and uh, some of it's convicting. I read some things in there that convict me that, oh, I need to stop doing this and stop doing that because, you know, um, I'm not perfect. And I sin every day. I don't want to, but I do. I don't want to, but I do. I just, I don't want to, though. I hate it. Now, before I got saved, I didn't care, you know, but, you know, you know, I didn't feel guilty for sin, did all kinds of stuff, didn't feel guilty for it. Uh, this is the way life's supposed to be, as far as I knew. I didn't know any better. But God will change your mind about all kinds of things. He'll wake you up to a lot of things that you, didn't, you had no idea about before. It's like he brings you to life. It's, it's almost like I was about two-thirds dead before Jesus came into my life. It's like I was uh, just a walking dead person, just barely had a spark of life in me. And I was miserable. Well, because of my childhood, being screwed up in the head because of all that. And uh, plus, you know, going through oh, puberty with no moral support, nobody to talk to to help me, no, no mother there to, God, help me through. Nobody I could talk to ever. I've had to muddle my way through puberty and into adulthood. Oh, my God. I've had to learn a lot of things the hard way, just muddling my way through and learning as I went. Oh, but thank God, God helps me through it all. And he has shown me things and, and uh, gave, he's, you know, taught me things and help me to realize some things and, and to know some things. And, and uh, it's good. It's good. The more we learn, the more we grow with God, the better off we are. It's exactly what we need. Our sin nature fights against it, though. Dang sure does. I know mine does. Old sin nature says, ah, I'll pray later because I'm kind of tired right now. Or, uh, you know, ah, uh, I'll read the Bible. Uh, I'll wait till tomorrow and I'll read the Bible because I want to watch a movie right now. And, and you know, I do that a lot. I, I hate to say, I'm ashamed to say, but, you know, God is still very much here with me. And that's why I have testified to y'all right now. Because God is real and true. Real and true. Lord Jesus is exactly who the Bible says he is. He is everything the Bible says he is. Lord Jesus is king. The king of the universe. He's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's the great I Am, the Ancient of Days. He's the Living Word of God. He's the Son of God. He became both God and man so that he could have even better fellowship with us in heaven forever. Think about that, y'all. I just now realized that, praise God. When God took on human flesh in the womb of Mary, at that moment, 
when the Holy Spirit conceived God's DNA in Mary's egg, God became both God and man because he, because he started to dwell in a human body. He started to dwell in a human body. So God is both, he's both God and man as far as, he's, he's the almighty God, of course, but he's also man in the physical body that he is living in. So his physical body is man, but he's still God. He's just living in that body now. He did all that for us. God himself left heaven and came down here to earth. And uh, and suffered for us and and uh, shed out his blood for us on the cross and allowed God the Father to pour out the wrath of God against sin on Jesus as he hung on that cross. So Jesus suffered spiritually as well as physically. And we will never know the extent of all the suffering and the awfulness that Jesus endured for us. I don't know if we'll ever know all of it. He might think that it's best that we don't never know all of it. I don't know. It's up to him. Only he knows. Only God knows. But think about that. This is how much God loves us and wants to have fellowship with us. Wants to have a relationship with us. He has done all of this for us. And he has, and God is not a man that he should lie. And God, is, it's impossible for God to lie. And he, he can't break one of his own promises because God is perfect and holy and righteous. And he said he will always, forever, be with us and never leave us nor forsake us. Jesus is always going to be there with us. God in the flesh with us. The Son of God who is God. You see, I mean, my brain can barely grasp this. It's mind-blowing. And I'm sure there's more to it that I haven't uh, realized yet. The Holy Spirit will show me if he wants me to know whatever he wants me to know, just like he just now showed me that. God took on flesh and dwelt among us. He became part man as far as the physical body is, but he is without sin. God, Jesus without sin because he was conceived by, by the Holy Spirit of God in Mary's womb. And there was no, there was no fornication or, or anything, anything sinful or wicked at all it was uh, a miracle God Holy Spirit somehow connected God to that egg in Mary's womb and God took on human flesh the word became flesh and dwelt among us Jesus is God in the flesh. He's the Son of God and He is God. He's God in the flesh. You don't get any better than that. And I, I, am, I know I am so absolutely unworthy. Unworthy to hope to go to heaven. I'm, I'm aware of how imperfect I am and how all the sinful, wicked things I've ever done and and uh, some of the 
awful things I say and, and, and think during the day sometimes. I get mad or agitated with something and then I'll say and think awful things and just different things. You know, we're not perfect. But that's why Lord Jesus uh, paid for our sins on the cross so that we don't have to pay for our sins. Jesus did it all for us. And then he said, it's finished because there ain't nothing else you can do to add to your salvation. There's nothing left to be done because he did it all. He did everything everything that was necessary for our salvation and he finished it and it's a, it's finished and it's a done deal all you gotta do is want it and ask for it it's all you gotta do to have God in your life and, and go to heaven you ask for it want it and ask for it. It's all you gotta do. And let God come into your life. Start reading the Bible. And talk to God. And, you know, you don't have to pray certain ways as long as you're respectful to God. Be very reverent and expressive. You know, respectful to God, but you still speak to Him from your heart. You just do it in a respectful way. You don't, you don't start talking ugly and vulgar and disrespectful, and you know, you talk to God like you give Him the praise and the glory that He He deserves and that He is. And just, you know, at the same time you're giving him praise, you're getting joy back into you, your soul, because you're rejoicing with God because, see, God is not vain. That's not why he wants to be worshipped. God wants to be worshipped so that he can bless us and give us joy joy and we can have fellowship with with God and visit with him and you know spend time with him and, and just in a in a way that you you can't with anybody else you can't with anybody else nobody else in this whole wide world you, you can't have the same relationship that you'll have with God See, my relationship with God is like this. See, we're interlocked. We're interlocked. I couldn't live without God. And, uh, and it's great. Anyway, I just wanted to yak at y'all for a while because... I've got to where I just really enjoy talking to y'all. I really do. I just, I mean, I, I might sound like some kind of a ridiculous person sometimes, you know, but I mean well, and I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think the right way, the way God wants me to think. I'm, I have been uh, convicted. Seems like for several weeks now I've been, been under conviction from God about uh, something that I have to change the way I think about some things. I have to... I have to discipline myself whenever I catch myself thinking one of those old thoughts I'm supposed to stop and change the way I think it instead of thinking in the negative I try to step back and look at it from an objectional point of view and then and 
not be negative. Not jump to being negative or something. You know, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know how to explain it. Shoot. But anyway, anyway, look at this baby girl right there. Look at her. Look at that baby girl. I love her. Yes, I do. I missed her the last two nights. Slept in here by myself. And it was lonesome, little girl. I felt bad about her in there in, a, in there in the living room all by herself and her wondering what the heck. But uh, she stunk. I mean, she stunk bad. I, I was just so grossed out. I couldn't stand it. Just couldn't stand it. Bless her heart. I think she might have rolled on something outside, you know, in the backyard. Ugh. Just look at that baby girl. She's looking at me with them sweet eyes. Them big old shiny eyes. These are big old pretty eyes. She gets me with them eyeballs. Yes, she does. She gets me. She gets me with them eyeballs. Just look at that. They, they like to be fussed over like this. They love it. It makes them feel loved. They know that you, you're crazy about them, too. Yes, you know I'm crazy about you, don't I? You could always. Sometimes she'll go to licking on her leg or her paw. She'll keep licking, licking, until she's got a big old wet spot on the bed. And it's just, ugh, that's yuck. She's starting to put a wet spot on the bed over here. I can't hardly stand that now. We blot it up. Try to blot that up with this paper towel here. It's not a lot, but I... Still want to blot it up, it a girl, it a girl, just a baby, it a girl, just a baby, it a girl. It's a doggone cute. It's a doggone cute. That funny hit a girl. That was so funny.
That was the gentlest she's ever played before. That was plum gentle. That <laughs> was funny. <laughs> Just a baby. She's just a baby. Good job, buddy. I love her. Yes, I do. I love her. Yeah. Lost a lot of pets over the years. Lots of pets over the years. Of course, you know, animals don't live very long. That's the way they always get killed somehow, poor things. Shot or run over or something. Always something happening to animal, animals. Anyway, they don't live very long. Get a fire, and I forgot the point that I was going to make. I have no idea. <laughs> She's looking at me with those eyes. She's got those eyes. She's got those eyes. Look at those eyes. <laughs> Look at those eyes. You should all go and keep in a bar. You should all go and keep. She should all go and keep. She should all go and keep. Well, here. <laughs> she sees herself in the phone and it's kind of freaking her out. <laughs> you should all go and kill that girl. I want the whole world to see how cute you are. I want the whole world to see how cute my baby girl is. All right, y'all. I'm going to cut the video off for now because it's been going on for about an hour, almost an hour now. Okay, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.